Good morning, folks. It's 9.29 a.m. Mountain Time, Thursday morning, 2017. The reason I'm doing this video is because this morning while drinking my coffee, I read this paper that came out about what's happening with Maria. And there's some unique, unique things happening with this storm. Currently, it's a Category 3, and it just destroyed Puerto Rico. Um, it's going to be headed up here towards the East Coast and go over warmer water here and probably re-intensify. So that's the current status of Hurricane Maria. But what I was reading was uh, from the AAAS here, NASA finds very heavy rainfall in Hurricane Maria. And I'm going to put a link to this paper in the bottom and I'm going to talk about what this means right here. And basically what this paper says is that NASA and NOAA's SUMI NPP satellite VIIRS instrument captured thermal image on September 20th at 2.12 a.m., which is 6.12 UTC, and the image showed very cold cloud top temperatures in the powerful thunderstorms in Maria's eye wall. Okay, these are high cold cloud tops. What that resulted in was upwards of 5.4 inches of hour of rain in some places causing torrential flooding some rivers rose 60 feet here's a quick run by of what some of the what it looks like now look at the trees back here this place is devastated there should be no power for maybe up to half a year good thing here is i see lots of power lines still up there on the left so not all doom and gloom and people are actually driving on the roads but the 5.4 inches a year is what I want to get at. So I went back into the historical record. I'm going to leave links to this, the, to this paper, the maximum record United States point rainfall for five minutes to 24 hours. So this paper will be linked. And also uh, this link here, where if you go back into historical rainfalls, the most rainfall I can find in North America here is 13.8 inches in two hours near Burnsville in 1943. Guys, <laughs> if you go to Solar Shutdown, my Facebook page, you'll find this chart and there'll be links to this chart and uh, Solar Shutdown. What you're going to find in 1943 is a solar cycle right here that we're coming off of, which is the same as the solar cycle we're in right now that we're coming off of. This is history repeating itself and the same exact type of solar cycle. So we're both in the bottom flexure here in cycle 24 and back here in 1943. We're coming off of the same amplitude and size sunspot cycle. This is history repeating itself. The next cycle we go through is down, going to be down here, which is going to be the same as the Dalton Minimum. So do some research on what happened in the Dalton Minimum, and that's what we have in store for the next 10 years. Now, why is this happening? How come during these minimums we get massive rains? Uh, it's amazing. We already know this. It comes from the cloud experiment, and it comes from the original work of Heinrich Svensmark, I'm going to leave links to all of this information. Now, what Svensmark uh, deciphered was that there's a connection between cosmic rays and surface temperature. Here is a graph of cosmic rays and sea surface temperature. <coughs> and it became, so Svensmark d discovered this during the peak of the global warming mayhem. It was very difficult for him to get published. People, you can just read about it here on this link here, which I'm going to give you, which is at Wikipedia the debate and controversy. I don't know what the debate and controversy is over. Take a look at this correlation here. This uh, is cosmic rays overlaid on temperature. Um, what they did was they removed some of the noise up here because there's volcanic eruptions. First, let me show you what the noise did. Volcanic eruptions that occurred here in 1980 caused the temperature to drop. And this volcanic eruption caused the temperature to drop drastically. So when you smooth those out, and the El Nino causes it to warm here. So in order to get rid of that noise, when you s <laughs> match up the graphs, the correlation is stunning. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Here we are in the, temp the global warming pause, and cosmic ray flux is going to continue to increase. It was up. 12% last year, supposed to be up up to 19% this year, continue to rise at that rate for, for the next 50 years maybe. 
So I'll leave links to all these graphs. Now what the cloud experiment did, which came after, and they use this cloud chamber here at CERN. The cloud experiment, which is amazing, because this is the mainstream, it made a huge discovery when it showed that biogenic vapors emitted by trees and oxidized in the atmosphere have significant impact on the formation of clouds, thus helping cool the planet. Which means that even in their cockamamie idea of the greenhouse effect, it causes it to cool the planet. There is no warming. There are so many contradictions in the global warming scam. And you can just go undo them all for yourself. But what I can tell you is that the cosmic ray flux is increasing. And as cosmic ray flux increases, temperature decreases in a direct relationship. As red goes down here, that means the cosmic rays are increasing, the temperature decreases. And this is a direct relationship. The next 20 years, cosmic rays are expected to get to levels unknown in modern times. They are already there. Our magnetosphere is waning at an uh, unprecedented rate, faster than ever recorded in history. And this is all the effects of the grand minimum are only going to increase. So expect more heavy rains. And the reason this is all happening, the reason this, what they proved here, this relationship comes from right here. So I'll give you a quick lesson on what's going on here. <clears throat> Both of the experiments determined that cosmic ray flux, what it does is it increases cloud nucleation in the mid troposphere. You're looking at the troposphere. Here's the tropical tropopause. So above here is the stratosphere. The troposphere, the mid and upper troposphere is where all the major storm systems exist. It's where the deep convective heating is. This is a hurricane system spinning in the lower areas with the outflow and the upper convection. And this is where that 5.4 inches of rain per hour was created up in this high cool air because the high cosmic ray flux that we're in currently causes more cloud nucleation in this storm. So the storm necessarily doesn't get bigger, but it could. But what it definitely has is more moisture. More cloud nucleation holds more moisture, equaling more rainfall. And that's what we got from the work of Heinrich Svensmark. And it was confirmed by the cloud project from this machine. So get the facts, folks. Do your research. I'm going to leave links to all this so you can become an expert in cosmic rays and how it affects temperature on Earth. Um, because we have to spread the truth. Because these weather events are only going to get more extreme it's, and crop failures are going to continue and people are going to want answers. And you will have them. I hope that helped you get a little insight into uh, climatology and the research work done and the amount of information we know. Um, we have really high confidence on what is happening, whereas the people in the global warming arenas have nothing but alarmism and fake graphs. Here's the real science, folks. Thanks for watching. If you haven't, subscribe to our channel and share this with like-minded individuals. Have a great day.